Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. In this video, I'm going to solve a problem which was asked in Capgemini interview. The candidate had 2.3 years of experience working as a Java developer. And apart from Java, he was having knowledge about Spring Boot and REST APIs as well. Now in this video, I'm going to share the Spring Boot interview questions which were asked in this interview. Okay, so there will be total five interview questions which were based on Spring Boot knowledge. And apart from that, he solved this problem. And when he solved this problem, he was selected and he was offered a CTC of 8.5 LPA for 2.3 years of experience. Okay, now let me explain you what was the problem statement and how he solved it. Okay, so he was asked uh, to write a Java program to find the intersection of two arrays. So he was given two arrays of numbers or integer values. And he was asked to return the intersection of these two arrays. Now, let me tell you what is meant by intersection. So intersection is nothing but the common elements from both the arrays. Okay. And he was asked to print each element in the result set. And that result set should contain only unique numbers. So your result set should not include duplicate values. It should be unique and the order can be anything. Okay. Now let me tell you how to do this by using Java 8 features. There was a condition that he was, uh, he was uh, said that he cannot use the collections like has said, and he was asked to solve it by using Java 8 features. Now, let me tell you how to do this. So if you see, this is the example. Let us consider these two arrays are going to be the input array. And if you see, the output is two because these two arrays contains two. And if you see, this twice two has been duplicated. That means it is twice in both the arrays. But my resultant array should include that element only once. So my resultant array should give me the distinct elements. Same way, there is another array which contains few elements which are duplicate or which are available in both the arrays, four and nine. Both are available in two both arrays. And my resultant output should be the array or it should be a set of these two elements. Okay. And once I do this, I will share uh, the Spring Boot questions which were asked in the interview. Okay, now let me write the code and how to, let me show you how to do this. Okay, so here you can see I have created a class intersection of two arrays and inside that I have written a main method which is going to be starting point for my programming, program execution. Okay, now let me declare the array. So I will name it as a first array is equal to, and what I will do, I will simply copy the elements which we have taken into problem statement. So I will take the first array, okay and I'll paste it here. Same way, I will declare another array and copy the elements which we have taken into problem statement. Okay, now we got both the arrays. What I need to do is I need to use Java 8 features and find the intersection of these two arrays. That means the common elements from these two arrays. Okay, now to use Java 8 features, I'm going to use stream APIs. Okay, and to convert this into arrays into a stream, I'm going to use stream function. So there is a class arrays dot, and I can use stream function to convert the arrays into a stream. Okay, so this stream will give me a sequential integer stream for the given arrays, and I'm going to use first array. Okay, so what I will do. Here I'm converting the first array into a string. And then what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a filter method, which is available in stream APIs, Java. And now this filter method takes a predicate. This predicate is nothing but a condition. And this condition should be a condition which will find whether the number is duplicate in second array or not. Okay. For that, what I'm going to do, let us consider this is going to be a number x from the first array, and I need to check this number with the element from the second array. For that, I'm going to again use arrays dot stream because I need to convert second array as well into a stream, and then I'm going to use any match method. This any match method will match any element 
with the provided in predicate or the condition. And this condition is going to be the condition to check if my second array element is matching with the first array element. So this Y, you can consider it as an element from the second array. And this X is an element from the first array. Okay, so here what we did, first we converted that first array into a stream. And then we used a filter method so that I'm going to filter the numbers which are matching in both arrays. And that filter method takes a predicate or a condition. And this condition is going to be a condition which will check the first array element is matching or not with the second array element. And for that, I'm going to use any match method. Okay, so I'm done with this filter condition. This will give me a result whether the given array elements are matching or not. So it will give me all the elements which are matching that is in first array and second array. Now I need to find only distinct elements or I need to remove the duplicates and I need to collect only distinct elements. For that, there is a function which is available in Java stream API. And this distinct function will return only distinct elements which are there in this result set. So we filtered the list and then we are going to take the distinct elements from this. And after that, what I need to do, I need to simply print the array elements. So for that, I'm going to use for each method. And this for each method takes an action. And the action is nothing but printing the elements on the screen system dot out dot and I'm going to use print element method to print the elements on the screen. Okay, so system dot out and then I'm going to use print ln method. This will print the elements on the console. Okay. Now let me remove the unwanted imports and run the code run a Java application. So here you can see uh, it is printing two as uh, output, which is nothing but the expected output. Okay, so what we did, we first converted the first array into a string, and then we used filter to filter the numbers which are matching into the second array by using any match function. And then we tried to find the distinct elements by using distinct function. And then we used for each method with an action as a system dot dot print element to print the elements on the console. Let us test the another test case and see what will be the output. Okay, so I'm simply copying the elements from the second test case and I'll paste it into first step, second array. I'll save it and right click and run as Java application. So here you can see we are getting the expected output as four and nine, which are the common elements, or it is nothing but an intersection of these two arrays. Okay, guys. So that is about how to solve a problem by using Java to find the intersection of two arrays. Now let me explain you the Spring Boot interview questions which were asked in the interview. Now the first question was, what is the default port on uh, which Spring Boot application runs? Okay. So if you see the, uh, if you run the Spring Boot application, the default port on which Spring Boot application runs is edge zero, edge zero. Actually Spring Boot application comes with a embedded Tomcat server and that Tomcat server runs on edge zero, edge zero port and where we are deploying our application. The next one question was, can we change the, that default port? And the answer to that question is yes. We can change the default port by adding server dot proper server dot port property in your application dot properties file. So when you create a Spring Boot application, you will get an application dot properties file, and inside that file, you can mention a property server dot port, and here something like this, and you can change the port by using this property. So you can configure the property like this and your application will start running on port 9090. So that was the first question. The next question was, is it possible to change the port of the Tom embedded Tomcat server in Spring Boot? The answer is yes, it is possible by using server.port in the application. So it was same 
like it can be changed by adding server or property like this. Then there was one more question that can we overwrite or replace the embedded Tomcat server in Spring Boot? The answer to this question is yes, we can replace the Tomcat server which comes with your Spring Boot application. So how it comes with your embedded uh, embedded uh, Tomcat server with your application. So if you notice the pom.xml file, it comes with the dependency Spring Boot starter web. And that starter web actually includes a dependency for your Tomcat server. That's why we are able to run the application on Tomcat server. Now we need to exclude this Tomcat server and include our own server. Let us consider you want to use a JT is another server. And if you want to use that server, so first thing what we need to do is we need to exclude the Tomcat server or Tomcat dependency from pom.xml. So you can write code something like this. This exclusion will exclude this Spring Boot starter Tomcat dependency. Okay, so your Tomcat server will be removed. And now next thing what you need to do is you need to include your server dependency. So let us consider you want to use JT server to run your application. So in that case, you can add this dependency in your Spring Boot application. This will add a JT server in your Spring Boot application and your Spring Boot application will be deployed on this server. Okay, and you can simply restart your application. You will be able to see that your application will be deployed on this JT server and not on the Tomcat server. There was a next question which was related to a Spring Boot application annotation. So what is the Spring Boot application annotation? Basically, this Spring Boot application annotation is a combination of add direct configuration annotation, add direct enable auto configuration annotation, and add direct component scan annotation. So when he said that it is a combination of these three annotations, he was asked to provide the use of these three annotations. So this direct configuration annotation is an annotation. Actually, it indicates that a class can have one or more bin methods. So this can be used as a configuration for your Spring Boot application. Then direct enable auto configuration. It enables Spring Boot to auto configure the application context. So whenever you declare a bin or whenever you create a bin, that will be auto configured by this annotation. So this annotation enables Spring Boot to auto configure the application context. Therefore, it is automatically creates and register bins based on both included jar files in the class path and the bins defined by us. So this basically enables Spring Boot application for auto configuration. Then and direct component scan annotation. So this basically specify the package that we need to be scanned. So this will scan the packages in this specified. Uh, you can pass a parameter and that parameter tells the packages or the classes needs to be scanned into that specified parameter. So this add direct component scan annotation specify the packages that we wanted to be scanned. And if you don't specify the argument with this component scan annotation, here you need to specify the best package, something like com dot uh, cloud tech dot controller. And this is going to be a base package. Here you need to mention base package equal to com dot cloud tech controller. So it will scan all the classes which are inside this controller class. And for that purpose, we use a direct component scan annotation. And if you don't mention this argument, then it is going to scan the current package and all its packages. Okay. And there was one more question related to the annotation. So how to disable a specific, specific auto configuration class? So here we have used auto enable auto configuration annotation and you can use the same annotation at any class or at a base class where your Spring Boot application uh, resides. And here you can provide 
exclude property or you can use exclude property with the class name which you want to exclude from the auto configuration so here you can use exclude property and this exclude property you can specify for a class so let us consider you don't want to include or enable auto configuration for this employee class so in that case you can use exclude class exclude property with this class name okay okay guys, so that's it from this video if you like this video please like share and subscribe that will motivate us to create more videos like this thank you bye bye